This is the fourth presidential election in a row in Argentina since the country returned to democracy. They've become Venezuela's refugees. A couple of years ago, all this would have seemed unthinkable. General Pinochet was still a very powerful figure in Chile. The more he says it, the less people believe it. This is the house. Yes, this is the house. Here, I was taken to a room. I was shown bodies lying on the floor. Saddam's men are now slowly becoming George Bush's men, taught to police the American way. Being an Iraqi police officer in Baghdad means one thing. No one really trusts you that much. Under pressure following the attack in Gaza, Yasser Arafat clearly felt compelled to talk. Are you against our constitution? I'm not against the constitution. It I'm just seems that you are no, against I'm our just constitution. Asking, I'm just asking a question. You have to ask accurate questions. Okay. Not your questions, okay. accurate questions. You are speaking with Yasser Arafat. Hussam is brought out of his cell, a would-be killer in handcuffs. A boy who doesn't even reach my shoulder. As up till now, this is what a busy day looked like in one of Jericho's biggest tourist attractions. I was the only cable car passenger for months. In Gaza, a strong man has to show up with some panache. Hi, Colonel, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. Good Thanks. to see Thanks. you. Thanks. So these are your men? Yeah. How can you be a democratic party on the one hand and an armed militia on the other hand? It, it doesn't mix. It mixes all over the world. This is normally a quiet oasis town. Hard to recognize amid all the dust, rubble and gunfire. But for others, the borders are much more simple. Right, that, that, uh, that doesn't leave any room for a Palestinian state. I don't want a Palestinian state. In Haifa, at the site of the Hezbollah rocket strike, there was a sudden warning of more attacks. Uh, this is what life is like now in Haifa. The siren is going off. Israel Sharon heard the Hezbollah rocket land from his house just a few doors down. He's even kept a piece I, of it. I, you know, it's like I say, to be or not to be, because if they will win, we have no what to do here. In the border town of Kiryat Shmone, only the poor and the elderly remain. Fanya Harosh shows us into her house. She sent her six children south, away from Hezbollah's rockets. I ask why she's still here. I soon see why. Her 80-year-old mother, Esther, is too frail to move. Boy, 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 girl, boy, boy. This is China's growing problem. We've got the girls on one side and the boys on the other side, and they have to pair up. So, each of the girls has to take a boy. As you can see, there are some boys left over. Not every one of the kids in this class will get to find a wife. There's bits of rain in the air and the wind is hugely heavy. And this is the Yangtze River right next to me. And have a look at the water level. It's come up to about half the level of the trees. We wait for a new face and we find it. This is Xi Jinping, the party boss in Shanghai. In communist code, the first new face here is China's heir apparent. Get a good look at the faces behind me, because the men on this platform will be ruling China for the next 15 years. Tsai Shuihua is hoping to find his 32-year-old son, Anfu. He's asked rescuers to search because he's convinced his son is still alive. The day before yesterday, we called my son's mobile phone, he says, and we got through. But we could only hear breathing, very weak breathing. The workers look inside, but they don't find any survivors. Rescue workers have given up hope here. They've got to move on to other places. But when your only son is trapped underneath all this and you believe that he's still alive, you can't walk away. How do you tell someone that they should give up looking for all that they have? 
the Olympics have come to Beijing. The older generation in this country can remember poverty, war, and famine. What must this be like for them? Tonight, everyone that counts has come. Now, what's happening here? Um, uh, you're not able to see me at the moment because there are two gentlemen with umbrellas. Each of them have earpieces. Uh, and uh, they're being told, I think they must have been ordered to just keep an eye on the foreign press, sometimes get in the middle of, of the shot because that, that tends to happen quite a lot at the moment. So we've heard that happening to other foreign journalists as well. Uh, it certainly protects them from the sun. Miners are trapped almost half a mile beneath this desert hill. The midterm elections matter because they change what a president is able to do. Wherever you look here, there are pictures of Colonel Gaddafi. The PKK can count on plenty of local support. Omer Timuchin lost his wife and three of his seven children. Three of his other children were injured in the attack. He can't bear to tell them that their mother and their siblings are dead. When you plant a bomb, how can you guarantee that innocent men and, and women and children won't actually get killed? They've been setting up their own barricades. You can just about make up people over there. Goodness me. The police have moved in with tear gas and they're now instructing everybody to leave the park at once. A nighttime curfew has been imposed on Cairo. I'd say we're about 100 metres from the Rabah Mosque encampment. We've been hearing live fire. This is the entrance to the makeshift morgue. And people here are desperately trying to get inside. This population, with its Russian flag over there attached to the Ukrainian flag, wants to have a closer alliance with Russia, it wants a referendum. This has become a vigil. They're desperate to find out what's happened to the miners still trapped underground. And there's nowhere else for them to go. This week has shown Israelis and now Palestinians that their children, their teenagers, are often the most vulnerable. This alarm means that there is a possible rocket coming in from Gaza, and everyone has just a few seconds to get through to the shelter. So far this week, no one in Israel has been killed by rockets. But how do you measure fear? It's hard to believe that she's a real nun. But when you meet her at her convent in Milan, it's hard to believe that she's a pop star. The migrants are just a meter or so from the shore. This is the end of their journey. What a journey it's been. The army takes us to visit a bomb shelter in the basement of a music academy. One family takes refuge here. The older man, Alexander, under a blanket, is too weak to be moved. Debaltseva has become too dangerous for most civilians. I caught the eye of this survivor next to the window. He responded with a thumbs up, then a smile. Around 800 migrants set sail with them. The survivors fit onto a single minibus. No one knows the names of these dead, so the coffins simply had numbers. Hello, you're in Europe. Hello. How are you? I'm fine now. Good. Now I'm a free dog. I'm a human being now. The crowd around me here doesn't really know what's going on. They don't know if the border's going to reopen, but they don't want to miss their chance. We are human. We're trying to be someplace safe. At the back, one man struggles with a crutch. Azat carries his elderly mother on his back. In the scrum, Mustafa and his daughters Nancy and Mariam get separated from his wife. He tries to reassure his girls. I've been watching several dozen refugees come up these train tracks. They'd obviously been hoping to get to where you are, just that last 20 metres, but this line of police is stopping them. People are just washing their eyes out. And this was really the first confrontation we've seen. No, 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 no,
Six-year-old Asal has just come up to me here and she's shown me the drawings she's done on her own using nothing more than flimsy tissue paper. As you can see there's a tree here she's done. There's another tree, a flower. Each drawing shows happiness and excitement. These children will soon find out whether real life fits their picture. And suddenly Spanish voters found they had three major parties to choose from, which made it more complicated. This afternoon there was a large aftershock, enough to shake the entire town. The ground has just shaken again here. And he can still command an audience, but Mr Obama's ability to shape events is now fading. Rescuers know now that they're searching in the right place. The village of Nodejino watched the fires approach. A dozen residents jumped into this water tank to escape. 84-year-old Marta de Concesan was helped in by her daughter. Oh God, oh God, it was awful, she tells me. Like hell. Some campaigners here have worked for decades for an independent Catalonia. Tonight, this country realizes that it now faces a sudden choice. The Italia non gioca and then nel What's it like not to have Italy in the World Cup, I asked. It's bad. It's awful. Sad, they said. A few more seconds, and those drivers would have crashed to the ground. Como es vivir en Caracas hoy día? Una Olicea. ¿Sabes lo que es una Olicea? Bueno, una Olicea. Para todo. Italy is used to having hot summers. Okay, James, uh, how do you keep cool? By trying not to stand and do lives in the middle of the day with you. 